Shalom. Call Hello, Yahweh by Shemel Shai by Hashem Kodash. Double honors into the apostles, double honors into the elder bishops, citations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than never. To the scattered elect that are scattered among the heathen nations, among the heathen that look like the heathen, and to the Aquaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. Coming at you with another lesson in truth. And these are uh, footage from the riots uh, in Europe that raged across Europe just a short couple years ago before the, uh, even at the beginning stages of the, uh, of the last uh, uh, scandemic. And um, <clears throat> what they call them, the yellow jackets or whatever. But uh, all this, all this is orchestrated so that, so that agendas could be, you know, reached so that things could happen. Um, you know that the problem reaction solution scenario and this is also and this is also angry anger of the people and um, because of failed policy and uh, and then this makes it easy to come in and pick up the pieces and take and take over and rearrange and change everything all right after something like this happens okay sometimes this is a response that they want so that they have an excuse to uh, you know to implement what they want to implement but let me grab a quick scripture, all right? Because this is just, you know, just more crafty counsel. But this is uh, Daniel 8 and 25, and it reads, And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, that he shall be broken, without hands. So he's going to be broken with no power eventually. And we're getting close and closer to that. But before he does, he's going to storm in just like you see him storming in on, on, on the screen here. All right. And he's going to do a lot of damage to a lot of people as, as he does. So, so, uh, let's go. Let me pull up this, uh, this video. Racist, controversial. Uh, here we go. So it is, it is Wait a minute. Minor... Got ahead of ourselves. So let's get it ready to go. Because what you're about to hear is exactly what they do and what they've been doing since they come into power. And so it has been, with but minor variations in one country after another. Divide the people. Get them fighting among themselves rather than their common enemy. Create the appearance of popular support. Through a favorable press and the use of terror, intimidation, and the creation of martyrs, make the world believe the revolution is a popular one. You know, kind of, that makes me think of uh, George Floyd. When obstructionists to the cause become too irritating, label them as fascists, Nazi, anti-Semitic, extremists, mm. racists, controversial. Precipitate mob violence. Get Whoa. mobs into the streets. March and demonstrate. As the demonstrations grow in number and intensity, they will acquire political character through the desired collision and open combat with the forces of law and order. Wow. You see that? That's exactly what you were looking at. So these things are not, things like this, it's all part of a plan to gain more control, create the chaos. You know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's just like when you have instances when there are certain things that happen to people's health, and then they already just magically have the, the answer for it already at hand, you know, or, or like uh, the person that uh, uh, that runs in to save you from the fire, all right, but they're also the same person who started the fire, all right, so yeah, so this one got pretty bad out here, but, and it's going to get bad out here, because these these riots were, were, were bad, but, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, there was some shooting that happened, but you know, this was mostly hand to hand and rocks being thrown and sticks being swung. But you know, it's gonna be, it's literally gonna be guns uh, firing back and forth when it finally comes here to Babylon. And, it, and it's gonna get real bad and it's gonna get bad soon. All right, and now we have this uh, this monkey biz and the, and the who is gonna take over as a result of it. And if I'm not mistaken, that policy, that, that, that was signed into law by Barack Obama. 
Um, but he, uh, you know, I forget what they call the NDAA Act or something to that, uh, to that, uh, uh, you know, my dude looking on the ground looking like Drake. <laughs> um, but uh, something to the effect that um, if if chaos or civil unrest uh, ensues in America, uh, NATO would would take over. In this instance, who is a part of you know is a part of that that power structure as well. And and they're they're actually voting on that right now as, as we speak. They're in uh, Switzerland, right now. I think in Copenhagen or, or uh, I could be mistaken with that, but they're definitely in Sweden in two different two different cities in, in Sweden where they're doing this. And just like I heard the brother say earlier, now that all the those elites have gathered, uh, I imagine they've already been child sacrifices and all sort of you know wickedness that has been done. For, uh, for their pre-ceremonies before they all sit around in, in suits and ties, you know, and uh, and make decisions on other people's lives, on how to control and rule over those lives and hoard all the wealth to themselves, because that's the purpose of all this. Um, but uh, that brings to mind this video right here. And, um, yeah, let's play this one, then we'll bring, up, bring out a quick scripture. Because what this brother says, this is some, this is some real... Real stuff right here. So it's being reported now that Tennessee is the first state in the country to implement um, camping on public property as a felony. My goodness. Do you know what that means? They know what they're about to do. Mm-hmm. They know they are about to make mass people homeless. And here's what they're going to do. You're going in a concentration camp. You're a public nuisance. The jails wouldn't be able to hold that many people. Now, let me tell you, the men of the Lord, you know, everyone's talking about this. Even Glenn Beck did a whole show on it uh, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. But the men of the Great Millstone have been telling you everything that's happening now, been telling you since 2007. And many people scoffed and screamed that conspiracy theorists, we were crazy conspiracy nuts and doomsday prophets and et cetera, et cetera. But everything that we've been saying, starting from the uh, from the apostles and the elder bishops on down, is coming to pass and we're living it. All right. So what he's talking about, you know. I've been talking about this since 2007, since I've been a part of uh, this, this thing of ours. They are about to create homelessness and lawlessness on a mass scale. To tell the homeless that they can't camp out in public is sick. Why are they making a the decision that we the taxpayers? When are we the people going to rise up? When are we going to start making stop making posts and take some guns down there and just start firing? And the way he's talking, lots of Americans yeah, I, feel I, that know, way at this point. That's the only thing they understand. All of this conversation. Well, let's have a conversation. They're literally trying. He, and he's not alone on that. And that, that's not the way. But, you know, but a lot of people don't, you know, they're not spiritual. They don't believe in the Lord. And they don't have the patience to wait. And a lot of people are going to uh, going to uh, do exactly what he just said eventually. And at time, it's very close at hand because most of these people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know. So and that's also going to bring to life second Ezra 15 and uh, and 16 chapter. We're literally living in it and it's about to go full blown. We're in that already, but it's going to go full blown. Trying to extinct us, unalive us all. And there are a lot of people talking about, let's have a conversation. Those are the weak that's going to fall by the wayside. But I pray for you people in Tennessee. When it's officially enacted, man, they're going to do all those mass evictions. And they're going to start scooping people up in silence, taking yep. them to concentration camps, telling them that the jails are overrun. And this is a detainment center. Then they're going to see if you got proof of your uh, J-A-B while you're in there. Oh, by the way, have you been uh, jabbed? 
No, oh, well, you're a health nuisance. We're going to keep you. That's what's about to happen. That's what's about to happen. They're going to keep all of the people. They, they're creating the problem right now. See? They're they creating it right now. They're getting, like, they about to stir everything up. They're stirring this pot. They about to stir this pot, yes. and this gonna get crazy, y'all. They stirring the pot right now. They creating the situation right now. So they probably got National Guard or some kind of military force already on standby to sweep the streets up from the people. Get the people up out of there. The minute they hit the street, a couple of days later, let's get them out of there. Put them in them camps. Stop putting them in them camps. They're going to tell you it's for your safety. The jails is overrun. Here it come. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> Just like you see on the screen, man. Here it comes. All right. Um, let's grab a couple scriptures. Salakia. This has just been happening a lot lately. People decide they want to communicate me what I'm doing. Um, so like you one more second. Salakia. Let me grab uh, 50, uh, Psalms. This is Psalms 55 and 11. Because, yeah, they're going to take everybody to those camps and, and tell other people that they can't, you know, because a lot of people are going to be homeless, even more homeless. They're going to set up their tents and be on public property, and, and then that's going to be against the law. And they're going to tell them it's for your own safety, you know, and that whole sort of thing because of the monkey business is spreading, you know. And um, and they're just gonna, you know, this is this is what's best for everyone. They're gonna tell people that, and and, and this is a Psalms fifty five and twenty one, and it reads, "The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they drawn swords." So you know, just like these these uh these cops, you know, is 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 about to explode and run on these people. It's gonna be the same thing then. All right. And it's going to get so bad out here that it's going to take, uh, you know, for us, for the Israelites, it's going to take that um, uh, Michael to stand up, you know. So I'm, I'm so I just pulled up Daniel 12 and one and it reads. And at that time, shall Michael stand up? The great prince was stand up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one of them shall be found that shall be found written in the book so the elect are going to be uh saved out of this time and then it's going to get so bad that it's going to take michael himself to to come down and and you know and, and slow down the sword of, and keep the sword of uh esau off of the elect that's how bad it's going to be okay and then eventually yahweh himself is going to show up and just wreck house but uh let's play another video of of this story that's been passed around on the internet um whom we believe you know after i heard it this could have been yahweh shah himself or an angel all right but let's uh let's play it and the thing is is that this story has been told by a lot of people in high places with high security clearances this story has been repeated uh, a few times so uh let's let it let it play and then we'll finish up one more scripture after that probably one of the most shocking things i ever heard um it came from my insider uh jacob i call him that in the book who actually actually really need to see it for the Rothschilds you can't see it anyway does, does. and um also is a whistleblower who doesn't really do what they want, but continues to work for them because he feels like there's some very serious extraterrestrial threats to Earth and that what they're doing he is said, very... He said extraterrestrial threats to Earth. 
So the story goes that in the 1960s, there was a black man uh, in Africa who came in with abilities complementary to those of Jesus. And uh, he was performing miracles. He was starting to get people to listen to what he had to say. And the cabal tried to kill him. And, and I'm going to just say that more, that was an angel. All right. And the angels are described as so-called black men. So are all the characters of the Bible. So it's so it's uh, who the world eagerly calls God, Jesus and the angels. And then that was an angel, because when when Yahweh Shah comes back the second time, he's coming as a conquering uh, power. All right. This was a warning. All right. So let's let it continue about this. So this 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 so-called black guy that came to Africa and was healing people. You know, they could shoot him in the head and his skull would just regenerate and the flesh would grow back and uh, he was fine. And, uh, you know, so. And just so you know, Israelites are going to get that power. What he's speaking about, you know, will there, it will truly be their weapons. What it, no weapon formed against the shall prosper. Their guns and their weapons will not, their, their, their grenades, you know, their democracy grenade, it won't work anymore. All right. That, that day is coming. Crazy story that I heard, which, and, and remember, I was told at the time that if I disclosed this, that I would be uh, killed. And I ended up putting it in the book. Um, the story was that this guy, uh, you know, they finally said, okay, we're going to bring you to the United Nations and share your message with the world. Let's get you on this flight. They, they bring him on this flight. And instead of bringing him to the United Nations, they shot him repeatedly. And then actually had some kind of meat grinder device uh, and basically like a bandsaw, I guess, and sawed up his body into a whole bunch of pieces, put him in these very, uh, very like radioactive shielded uh, containers, and then had all these fighter jets dock with the plane and fly his body parts to all corners of the world, where then these containers um, uh, turned them into ash. And uh, they thought that maybe this would defeat him, like that his body somehow, the tissue was necessary. So if they destroyed all the tissue in all these places across the world, maybe they could defeat him. Defeat him. Well, he then regenerated in, in their offices. You hear that? And was fully fine, fully intact. But the sad part is that he said, you know, I, you guys so badly do not want me to. And this is not sad. This is actually great news. It's sad to him and his people. And the heathens, but this is very good news to us. Be here that I am not going to be able to do any more. You're going to get what you want, but bear in mind that in the future, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Wow. Wow. Well, that is all I know. Right. There's nothing more to the story than that. Um, I, no, there's a lot more to the story, so let, we're going to go to the scriptures now and finish it up. This is... Uh, 1 Corinthians, 15th chapter, one of my favorite chapters in the entire New Testament. It's the 15th chapter of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, in Romans, the ninth chapter. <laughs> um, but I'm going to start at about verse 50. And it reads, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven, neither doth corruption inherit Incorruption. So we're going to be made incorruptible. Perfect. All right. And it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So sleeping means we not we shall not all die. So the elect are going to be changed instantly into immortals. Where well, they'll be able to manipulate the elements in their own bodies and everything and everyone and anything around them. All right. And it says, and in a moment, the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and shall not be changed. All right. That also lets you know that, you know, that if they're dead, aren't they supposed to be in heaven already? That kills the heaven doctrine right there. All right. It says, uh, so when the corrupted corruptible shall put on the incorruption and the mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass. Then it shall be brought to pass saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, all right? Because we won't be able to die physical deaths anymore or get carried away like these guys, all right? 
O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord, Yahweh HaMashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in work. So do, what I'm doing right now, okay? And it says, uh, uh, of the Lord. For so much as ye, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So there's a reward coming for this work for us risking our lives and our freedom, you know, to, to, to push, to, to feed the sheep. And then the sheep that are listening and learning. All right. There's, there's going to be a, a, a reward for believing on your, how about you now shy and no weapon that they have will work. None of that guns, that high power rifles and machine guns, the poisons, their injections, none of that stuff is going to work against the elect. All right. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekha Kudash, Wa Ababa Ba, Kwam Yasharala, Shalom.